Good. So, good morning, everybody. Um, my name is Rolando Scott. Today, we're going to talk about the power of open source hosting. We're going to uh, talk about open source in general, the open web, uh, what that means, and we're going to talk about some hard truths and pop some bubbles, hopefully. Um, as always, thank you to our sponsors um, for making this session um, possible and this whole conference possible. Uh, the fact that it's free is thanks to the sponsors so, and all the great volunteers out there. So, yeah. Um, so my name is Rolando Scott. I am currently a technical account manager at Amazie.io. Uh, I am from San Jose, Costa Rica. I flew up here. Um, I actually, I'm from Costa Rica. I grew up in Virginia and now I'm living back there. Um, I've been around Drupal since Drupal 6, maybe. Um, and the phrase there that says I put out fires literally and figuratively is because for the longest time I was a volunteer firefighter. So people would say, you know, you fight Drupal fires in the morning and real fires at night. Um, and I would always say, I think the Drupal fires are probably more dangerous than the, the real ones. <laughs> I'm no longer a volunteer firefighter. Um, which means that I can sport this awesome beard, because I don't know if you know, uh, firefighters can't actually have beards. So uh, first hard truth, <laughs> if you guys see that show like 9-11, 9-1 or uh, Chicago Fire, that handsome lieutenant that comes out with like a full beard, that's a lie. <laughs> that's, uh, it, it can't, we can't put our masks, masks on with a beard. So. Uh, now I, um, as a hobby, I'm learning to fly plane. Um, so I went from like, dangerous hobby to another dangerous hobby, and I don't know, maybe I should check that out <laughs> at some point. Um, quick disclaimer, uh, I work for Amazie.io, who creates the product that we're gonna talk about today, but my views are my own, right? Uh, I'm gonna maybe say something that isn't a reflection of my employer, just wanna make sure we understood that. So, I have three goals for today, right? So, my first goal, is to persuade you guys that you, if you're convinced about the Open Web Alliance's mission and values, then you're already convinced about the value of an open source hosting platform. Um, the second goal is that the adoption of a truly open source hosting platform becomes a logical conclusion of the Open Web Alliance. And then the third thing that I would need to convince you guys is that there's unfortunately very, full, uh, very few open source hosting platforms and Lagoon, which is one of them, deserves your attention. So what is Lagoon? Lagoon is an open source application delivery platform for Kubernetes. Um, it's been open sourced by Amazie since August 2017, and Amazie is the main contributor to the project. But there's, as most open source projects, uh, there's tons of tons of other contributors. Um, this allows you to host anything that can be containerized. Um, there's a bunch of features to it. Um, it allows you to create a development environment from pull requests and branches. It can handle uh, spikes in traffic very well by increasing and decreasing resources. There's a lot of features to it. It's, it's pretty great. Um, it supports languages like Python, Java, Node, PHP, obviously. And because it does support these languages, it supports frameworks and CMSs like Drupal, WordPress, Symfony, React, Laravel, and basically a, a lot, a, a, um, more things. So it can basically run everything. Um, but let's circle back a little bit. Um, let's talk about the Open Website Alliance. Does anybody here know what that is? Oh, interesting. Because the Open Website Alliance was an alliance co-founded by Drupal uh, at the beginning of 2024. Uh, to facilitate collaboration between open source content management systems. And the founding members of it uh, was Drupal, WordPress, Typo3, and Joomla. And yes, I probably, as you guys, are surprised that Joomla is still existing and thriving, actually, <laughs> thriving. Um, so their whole mission is to educate about open source benefits and principles and advocate for open source benefits and uh, principles as well. Um, 
It basically seeks to promote and defend rights of open source projects and aspires to create a better web. Um, uh, but the other thing that it does is that it aims to encourage website owners to choose open source projects, right, over other ones. It, it aims to expand opportunities for other open source CMS projects. And in all, it's a community of communities, right, of the Drupal and WordPress and Joomla and Typo3 communities. Uh, build on further openness, trust, and quality. Uh, this community aims to be a platform where members can share and discuss best practices. Uh, they can better the perception of open source projects, the reliability, the quality, the safety. Uh, it's basically a group of folks just trying to get the message out there that open source is, should be your first option right? whenever available. If you guys want to learn more about the Open Web Alliance, uh, the link on the left is a link to their website. And the link on the right is the Drupal's association blog post about funding the alliance and some information there. So if you guys want to look at the QR codes. Um, so the Open Web Alliance is something that Drupal co-founded, right? Something important, something that Drupal believes in. But then we start looking at the open web. It's more than a technology, right? It's, it's a cost. It's something that we can stand behind, right? It's not just, oh, yeah, sure, I'll use this uh, project because it's open source. No, it's like, why are you using it, right? And, and why it's it important that we use it, right? So what are the causes, right? What, is, what, what does it mean to be a cost, right? So when we talk about the open web, the first thing we can say is that it's built on freedom. It, it's open web technology, right, that you don't need permission to learn, you don't need permission to build, to advance in your career, in, in the project, you don't need permission, to, anybody could do it, right? It's defined by being decentralized, right? That's the most important thing, or one of the most important things. No single person or entity controls the open web. Um, it thrives on inclusion. Everybody in the world can can uh, have a home on the open web, either as a consumer, a user, a creator, an architect, regardless of your background, regardless of who you are, how much money you have, <laughs> status, everything, right? That's part of the, the open web. But it also requires participation. Uh, open web means that we need people to, to see it as a responsibility, a shared responsibility, to get in there and make it better for everybody in a collaborative effort. But overall, it exists for empowerment. Uh, it's fueled by humanity's collective quest for information, connection, and progress, but strengthened by individual rights to choice, privacy, and security. The Open Web Manifesto, which is part of the Open Web Alliance, uh, tells us to, to live up to these ideas. The Open Web cannot be built on proprietary technology, and Three main points. It must be designed to protect, not exploit, personal data and public discourse. It must enable the next generation of innovators and entrepreneurs to compete. And it must be resilient in changing the world and not controlled by a select few. Those are the three main points. So let's talk about how our current industry hosting platforms stack up and how Lagoon stacks up uh, addresses these points. Actually. So it must be designed to protect, not exploit personal data and public discourse, right? I think, in general, most hosting platforms in the industry take data protection seriously. I think they do a good job of it. Um, protecting public discourse runs on a spectrum, right, from total freedom of speech to protecting protection of the people hearing the speech. I won't dive too much into that, but you guys probably know what I'm talking about. And, but what happens if you want to be in total control of the data of your hosting platform and you want to implement your understanding of protecting public discourse? You have to pick the provider that mostly aligns with your values, right? And hope that works out. With Lagoon, because it's open source and you can run your own platform, you can set your own rules and basically have it so it aligns to what your uh, view of public discourse is. Um, must enable the next generation of innovators and entrepreneurs to compete. Uh, to me, that just screams two things, scalability and flexibility. Sometimes with the current hosting providers, uh, scalability is complicated because they 
they force you to get a plan or to have resources available to cover uh, spikes or to cover things or needs uh, that happen every once in a while. Um, so if, for example, you have a website that gets a lot of visitors at one point during the day, uh, you're going to need a plan to cover the visitors for that one point in the day, even though the rest of the day you don't really need those resources. So that's kind of complicated. And then flexibility is another point where I think uh, hosting platforms right now are not doing great because if you use a platform built specifically for Drupal, it could be really hard or even impossible to run other things that aren't Drupal or PHP ad adjacent. Um, you know, try running a Node application, right, or you know, Python, Java, or you know, .NET. <laughs> So uh, next to your Drupal site, like it's, it's probably not possible in most uh, hosting platforms. So what ends up happening? You end up having three different services, right? And all those services have come with different privacy settings and different ways to access the information, um, which is not great. So Lagoon, because it uses Kubernetes pod scaling and compute node scaling, it can go up and down in terms of the resources you need. You get a lot of visitors, you get a lot of traffic, goes up, resources go up, it, those traffic goes away, resources come down. And then because it can run anything that can be containerized, you can run anything, basically. You can run the Node.js application. You can run a lot of crazy things next to your Drupal site. And the third point about how the hosting platforms stack up, uh, it must be resilient to a changing world and not controlled by a select few. Um, there are approximately just four major Drupal hosting platforms as a service offerings uh, in the Drupal space. That's not great. I wish there were more, uh, to be honest. I wish there were, we had more options to, to host for Drupal-specific hosting. Um, and yes, technically you could host the Drupal website on any host, but they're not made for Drupal, right? They, they're just a byproduct that just happens to run Drupal instead of made for Drupal. Um, on the other spectrum, on, on uh, WordPress, uh, almost 1% of all the websites in the world are hosted on automatic. And, you know, 1% doesn't sound like a lot, but <laughs> does anybody have any guesses on what 1% of all the websites in the world, what that number is? It's a crazy number. <laughs> uh, I'll leave that up for homework for you guys to figure out how much that is. But it's, it's, a, it's a dumb number, and no hosting company should ever control that much of the web. Um, as a fully open source platform, Lagoon, um, you know, organizations are empowered and encouraged to grab Lagoon and use it for themselves, right? Um, basically set up your own hosting uh, with all your rules. So it's not centralized and it's not controlled by a few people. So this brings me to my point of the whole talk, right? Um, if you buy into the open source and open web values, you know, like I think we all do because we're all in the Drupal world, you know, embracing a fully open source hosting platform is a logical conclu conclusion, right? If your CMS is open source, the tools that you use are open source, and your contributions are open source, shouldn't your hosting platform be too? It just makes sense, right? <clears throat> Another question. Um, how do you guys think all these CMSs uh, earn the trust placed in them? Like, wh when, when I download Drupal and I install it on a site, how do I know for a fact that I'm not installing malware, I'm not installing something bad, it's gonna mess up my computer, it's gonna mess up my visitors? How do I know that? What, what do you guys think? You can see the source. Because of what? You can see the source, right? So I would call that transparency, right? We've got our security review team. There's a security review team, which we, which we definitely appreciate and, and, and trust. Uh, any, any other reason why we inherently trust these platforms? Word of mouth, that's a good one, that's a good one. Because we've heard, right? We've heard about other people using them and having been successful with them and um, understanding that they are a good platform, right? So yes, that's, that's, I would say those are the four things. Uh, social proof, with which you were just saying, word of mouth, right? Corporate and institutional adoption, people have used them. Um, because they have a partner ecosystem, because people build things for those CMSs, right? So if, if you have a company that is dedicated to creating services for a CMS, 
it means that that CMS is actually worth it, right? No one would be crazy enough to to create a whole business model out of something that isn't reliable, right? Uh, customization flexibility, yes, because it can be customized, it can be flexible. It's because I understand that even though what I'm installing is not perfect as it is, it's a good starting point for what I actually need it. And what the gentleman said over there, uh, open source development model, right? The fact that I can see the source code that other people that are smarter than me can <laughs> actually see it and verify it and know that what it's, when I install Drupal, I know exactly what's going on. You know, Im imagine how crazy it would be if part of Drupal was closed source and you had to explain that to a client and say like, here's your website, like 80% of it I can change and modify however you want, but there's like this 20% that I can't, I don't know what's in there. And like, I can't modify that. And like, I apologize. I really don't know what's going on in this 20%, but like 80% is great. I don't think that would be a great conversation to have with clients, right? <laughs> It'd be a really weird one. Um, so now that we've seen those four points, uh, again, let's, let's talk about how the main hosting platforms stack up against those four points. See the trust issue, right? Social proof, right? Corporate and institutional adaptation. I think the, the most popular hosting platforms have done a great job of this. Um, we see them, they host uh, parties, they uh, sponsor events. Uh, you can, we all know that they host a great site. So this is a good thing. I think there's plenty of social proof uh, from all the major hosting platforms. Um, partner ecosystem, same, right? We, we see a lot of people uh, partnering up with them, creating services for them. Uh, we see a lot of agencies that uh, become partners as well and work uh, specifically with them. So partner ecosystem, I think it's, it's also uh, a great point uh, for the major hosting platforms. Um, customization flexibility, here's where we, you know, it kind of starts getting a little bit iffy. Um, there's a spectrum. Um, some are custom built for their respective technologies and are difficult to customize and, are, and others are super flexible, right? Um, but most of them, or almost none of them, actually embrace uh, emerging open standards for containerizing web apps. Um, so it's, it's, it's a spectrum. But lastly, uh, the open source model, right? This is where most platforms as a service providers fall flat. Um, all providers promote and support the open source software that they host. They often actively contribute to open source tools and software that runs on their platforms. But almost none of them actually code the underlying platform as a service itself as open source. And to me, I, again, I find that perplexing and even contradictory at times, uh, where a hosting platform tells you, yes, um, use open source tools, but don't, not mine. <laughs> Like, my hosting is mine, but like, yeah, you go ahead and, and use your tools to host on my platform. So let's just circle back into why I think Lagoon is a compelling open source hosting platform option for the Open Website Alliance, right? Not just Drupal, all of the CMSs um, that create the Open Website Alliance. Um, I think it ticks all the boxes, right? It's, it's designed to protect, so let's go through all the rules of the Open Website Alliance and uh, the first one is designed to protect personal data and public discourse, right? The fact that it's public, uh, it's fully open source, and you can set your own instance of it, which means you can set your own rules. So that's definitely something. Uh, it must enable the next generation of innovators and entrepreneurs to compete. Uh, it's super flexible, again, because of Docker contain containers and Kubernetes, and Kubernetes uh, auto scales and auto heals, um, which is great. It must be resilient to a changing world and not controlled by a select few. Again, Docker's, Kubernetes, and application delivery standards and best practices, but most of all, um, you can host it yourself. <laughs> so it means that it's not controlled by a select few. It has active contributors. It has um, a lot of people that um, are behind it, and it's not controlled by one single entity. It's open source, right? Resistant to vendor lock-in. That's an important one. Um, I'm sure we've all interacted or known or experience at some point um, some client or website that wanted to change hosting companies but couldn't because of technological reasons, right? They were locked in either by a big contract, either by um, some technology on their website that can't be used in other hosting platforms, any reason, right? 
Um, so with the fact that you can control your own platform means that you're never locked in. You set your own rules. Social proof, right? Corporate institutional adoption. Um, one of the largest implementations of Lagoon is for GovCMS in Australia. They have uh, every single government website in, the, in Australia uses Lagoon to get deployed. Um, they have a, a model where you could have like a different type of site depending on what you do. And it's all hosted in, uh, in working through Lagoon. Uh, we're talking hundreds of websites. At Amazie.io, we have a humongous client that has, I think last I checked, it had 1,100 websites, uh, one single client, 1,100 websites hosted through uh, Lagoon on a dedicated cluster. Um, so there's the social proof. It's being used by thousands and thousands of websites and thousands and thousands of users, um, large enterprises, startups, agencies, and we're still looking for folks to grab Lagoon and make it their own, right? As, as any open source project, I guess, the, the, the end goal is for more people to use it because the more people that use it, the better it gets, right? We, we actively want people to use it um, and contribute to the project. Um, one of the, <laughs> the craziest things about Lagoon, right, that, that I wanted to explain is um, at Amazie, we use Lagoon, right? But that also means that you guys could potentially, or anybody could potentially, grab Lagoon and create a hosting company from Lagoon. And you'd be doing exactly the same thing that Amazie does, right? And we would welcome that. We would love that. We would be happy for other folks to adapt Lagoon and continue to use it because, again, because it's open source, that would make the project better, which make make it better for everybody. Um, but yeah. Um, a partner ecosystem, right? Uh, developers are building Lagoon open source. There's the GitHub, obviously, uh, with uh, issues and conversations. And there is a Discord where uh, features are asked and people have conversations regarding it. Um, people implement it, developers. We have agency partners and professional services and support that uh, support Lagoon. Uh, it's very easy to customize and has a lot of flexibility, uh, again, I think this is a strong point, like if you can containerize it, you can deploy it on Lagoon. Um, I saw a startup that deploys lightning nodes for Bitcoin networks uh, using standard Lagoon. Uh, I would find it hard to believe that any other hosting platform that is Drupal-centric could even think about doing something like that. Um, and yes, the open source development model flexibility, um, you know, 100% open source, top to bottom, a community of developers, users, and implementers. So let's recap our goals. Um, I wanted to persuade you that if you guys believe in the Open Web Alliance, uh, the mission and values, then you're already convinced about the value of an open source hosting platform. Uh, again, I think most of the people that um, follow Drupal and understand the open source model uh, would agree with the Open Web Alliance's mission and manifesto, right? Uh, I want to convince you guys, I wanted to convince you guys, the, the adoption of a truly open source web hosting platform becomes a logical conclusion of the Open Web Alliance. Because of what they believe, because of what they stand for, uh, hosting should also be open source. And that unfortunately, again, I keep saying this, but it's true, there are very few fully open source hosting platforms. So Lagoon is one of the ones that at least I know about uh, that deserves a little bit of your attention. So hopefully I was successful in doing that. Um, you, please, like you guys, uh, explore Lagoon. You know, you can go to the Discord. There's an invite um, on the Lagoon page. Uh, there's the GitHub. There's the Lagoon page. Again, there's the Amazie page. And if you guys wanted to just play around with it and see how it works, feel free to send an email to that reach. Um, they'll set you up with a free inbox. Um, Amazie now has a, a way of doing self sign up as well. So you guys can test it out. You guys can test it out like on our platform and then realize that if you like it, you can just grab Lagoon, mount it on your uh, side, and it'll be exactly the same experience for the most part. Um, yeah, so any questions? Um, be more than happy to, to answer any questions you guys might have. If not, feel free to. Hit me up on my LinkedIn or have a conversation with me. Be more than happy. Usually, what version deploy that in the US or 
or? Yes. Uh, so it's AWS is the most common option, but there's we can we can use Azure for example. We could technically use Google Cloud as well. So. Uh, yes, we could use DigitalOcean as well. Bare metal. Uh, yeah, bare metal too. Yeah, bare, bare metal too. If you if that's what uh, what you want, we you could also use bare metal uh, services. I think I I, I don't know. I I think it's uh, I had a hard time understanding this from like a business model concept because when I came into uh, Maisie, well, I actually knew them from before, but when I came in, I was like, your whole business model is literally here's our main product. <laughs> Play for free, like use it. Like you can host with us, and you know we'll also we'll obviously provide some services regarding that, right? We'll give you support. We'll give you uh, monitoring, right? That's what Amazie does. We'll give you people like me as a TAM that will go in and like if you have a failed deployment or whatever, we'll go in and check it out for you and tell you and advise you what you should be doing better. Um, but if you want all of that just for yourself, here you go. And it's interesting to see companies and agencies that have taken advantage of that. And you know, now they have their own hosting. Like, isn't it crazy to just think like, to have your own hosting, uh, so you don't have to pay overhead, you don't have to pay services you don't need, and you can tweak it so it's exactly the right way um, that it works for your company or your agency. Um, so I, I think that's very powerful and, and I think um, Again, to the standards of the open web and all the open source philosophy and core values that we have as people that work around Drupal, um, it just makes a ton of sense. Is Lagoon similar for <laughs> I have Bree, Bree is my coworker, and I know she's she's dying to answer that question. Okay, yeah. Uh, so it integrates with there's recipes for like Lando, for example, and DDEV. And the cool thing about it is, um, it's actually perfect for local development because it's containerized. So your Docker container on your local is exactly what gets pushed up and built on Lagoon. So if anything, it's, it's actually a perfect solution for any of those tools or from DDEV. Um, you know, our clients use DDEV, they use Lando. Um, some of them are just like the, a proprietary, like not, not proprietary, but like a custom built Docker solution. Um, I've, I think even Doxel, I think was used at some point. Um, so yeah, it, it, it integrates with that perfectly because that Docker Compose file that creates uh, that environment is the same thing that Lagoon uses to create the environment on the server. So it's basically a one-to-one -one representation of what you have locally versus what you have on the server. That's actually pretty good. And yeah, we, uh, we're looking for uh, agency partners, anybody that wants to give this a shot um, and, and see if it, uh, if it can help you guys. So we, we definitely, at Amazie, we definitely have government, U.S. government clients. We have, I mentioned the Australian government, but also we have U.S. government clients. And there is a potential for you to grab this, and you yourself, if you're an organization, and you have the process to FedRAMP that, this could be part of your, your software that gets FedRAMP. Um, so yes, it, it, to answer your question, yes. If you, if you invest in that, yes. It's... Uh, we, we've seen uh, a lot of creative uses for it. Uh, the fact that you can push almost anything to it, just <laughs> so, sometimes uh, folks are overwhelmed, right? Because it's a lot of freedom. It's a lot of freedom and you know, with a lot of freedom sometimes, um, you know, you, you can do crazy things, right? You can, you can, you can host like Node and, and Drupal and a bunch of things side by side. So uh, we've seen pretty uh, creative and, and interesting things. What would be a, is there something similar outside of the Drupal WordPress? Uh, uh, there, yeah, there, there probably is. I'm, I'm sure there is. I'm, I'm sure. Um, 
can't remember right now, but when I was when I was researching this, I actually talked to my lead and I asked that same question. And he said that there used to be a company, uh, but they went under, <laughs> uh, that that offered a product that was open source as well. Uh, I can't remember the name, and I'm sure in other spaces there's probably I would hope that there's other uh, open source offerings for for hosting as well. Yeah, because just to understand from what you are saying is six on top of Kubernetes. Yeah. Exactly. That's, that's, that's the end goal. Like, you don't have to be a Kubernetes expert. You don't even know, have to know what it is uh, to be able to deploy the Kubernetes. You, you, the cool thing about it, and so a little bit of backstory. Um, I used to be the director of development for a creative agency. Uh, we were on one of the main hosting platforms. <laughs> uh, and we were hitting a wall with one of our websites. Like, there was a moment where we just needed more memory, and we couldn't get it because we we're at the top tier plan, and that's it. Like, you can't get it anymore, right? So I started looking around for other options, and I found Amazing, and I found Lagoon, and I felt, as a developer, I fell in love with it immediately because of how the ease of use, because of how um, developer-friendly it was. And yeah, so it's configured to, you can configure it so when you push a branch, it automatically deploys. That's all you have to do. And you can look at the logs, you can see how it's deploying, how it's building, all of that. Uh, and you can change configuration things with just changing a value in the Lagoon YAML file. There's one YAML file controls everything. So you need more memory? Great. Just change the value. You don't have to go through like clicking and adding a new plan or creating more instances or whatever or having to put, like, you need more resources? Boom. Just specify those and those get uh, created. Um, and so that was amazing for me. That, that was, to me, that set off like a chain reaction in my head because this other hosting platform, like one gigabyte of RAM was the most they could offer you. That, that was it. And with Lagoon and Amazie, uh, the guys basically said, oh, you need more? Here, there's a file. Change this to 4, 8, 12, whatever your heart desires. And that just blew my head. I was like, what? <laughs> um, so I immediately fell in love and, you know, time... Sometime later, I ended up working with the guys. Um, but yeah, uh, flexibility of Lagoon is, is that. Is that you don't need to know about Kubernetes. You don't need to know about all the things going on behind the scenes. It's open. You can see it. You can see how everything builds. But um, the ease of use is that. You just deploy. If the branch matches a, a, a pattern that you've specified before, uh, then yeah, it deploys. It creates a development environment copies everything. You can set it so it copies databases. You can set it so it automatically syncs configuration if you want, clear cache, whatever you want, um, it can do when you're, when you're deploying. How, how is it developed? Is it a set of Terraform files with bash, or is it a Go application? Or is it... I'm, I mean, I, I'm not a Lagoon developer, so I, I wouldn't actually know the underlying they're technology? Using, yeah, they are using Terraform under the hood. There's but definitely, yeah. Like, We're not putting any of that. Yeah. There's a limit to that. So, yep. I, I yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But, yes. Yeah. YAML files. You have one YAML file that controls everything uh, pretty easily. Yeah, and if you really want to dive down the Discord, Discord, you can just hop on and start asking questions. Our Lagoon engineers sit in there. They wouldn't love it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the, the, we have a dedicated Lagoon team, right, at Amazie, and they always geek out when, when people start using the service and product and asking questions. And I think that's a cool thing. That's another thing that I, I didn't mention, but um, one of the cool things of having this being open source and just transparent is feature development is also very transparent. Um, you know, in, in other platforms, if you want something, you can probably talk to your rep 
and they'll say, yeah, sure, we'll figure it out, we'll put it in the pipeline or whatever, right? And it may or may not be built. Uh, with Lagoon, you know, actually have a public roadmap. You can see the commits as they come. And the best thing yet, if you are a developer and know that and you want to develop a feature for Lagoon, you can actually do it. You can create it, got a pull request, they'll review it and see if it's good, and then they'll just add it. So imagine being able to go to your hosting platform and say, I need this feature, here you go, I developed it, and now it's available to you and everybody else, right? So you just made the hosting platform a lot better. Um, that's, uh, to me, that's great. And again, mind-blowing, because in other platforms, if you want something, you just kind of have to patiently wait for it. Or in, you know, the kind of best, worst-case scenario, pay for it um, to be developed if they have a system like that. So again, um, uh, feel free to reach out um, at LinkedIn. Feel free to reach out if you see me uh, here. I'd be more than happy to talk about Lagoon or anything else uh, Amazy related or open source related. A big believer in open source. I think we all at heart are as well because we're users of Drupal and um, this just makes a ton of sense. Any other questions? Cool. So I will press the button. Thank you very much, guys, for coming to <laughs>